Back here on Sportsline, we're talking the Titans. Coming off their preseason loss, Travis Haney covers the Titans for the newly launched Nashville section of The Athletic and joined us last night on the Electric Power Company's Sunday Sports Central. To talk more about the Titans, we bring in Travis Haney from The Athletic. Titans coverage for the site began on Monday. So first off, Trav, congratulations. Nice to be back with you, Steve. Yeah, great to have you here in studio. Now, you were in Pittsburgh for the game on Saturday. Tell me, was Marcus Mariota as bad in person as he looked to many fans on TV? And how big of a concern is that coming off his most extended action of the preseason? Yeah, Steve, I think everybody in that dress rehearsal game wants to see a sharp offense moving forward, getting better, and... You can't really say that about any facet of it, Marcus included. Was there miscommunication on the one third down? Probably some combination of the two. But overall, when you add another third down miss to Corey Davis and then a just a really bad decision downfield that wound up being intercepted and returned pretty deep into Titans territory. Yes, I think overall he did not look very good. And I think you've seen moments of that when you've been out at, at camp practices, Steve, that this is someone who hasn't been all that accurate, all that consistent. Some of that maybe is the shuffling of the receivers that he's had to deal with during the course of the month of August. But going into now, he's not going to play this week. So you won't know until week one whether it was indicative of kind of where he is right now or whether you just scrub it and say, ah, it's just the preseason. We learned today that Richard Matthews is coming off the pup list. That's great news. What does the addition of the team's best receiver the last couple of years do for Corey Davis, Taewon Taylor, or the rest of that receiving core? Yeah, I mean, we were talking about it in the pre-show that when you add a Richard Matthews who had 118 catches the last two years, when you add a Delaney Walker who was right in that same area, 139 catches in the last two years, that's a lot of probably what you've been seeing with this offense the last two or three weeks is – inconsistency in terms of who he's throwing to uh, younger guys uh, journeyman types like Darius Jennings and Nick Williams so I think the comfort level once you get Richard back out there and certainly once Delaney Walker comes back from his injury I think you'll see a lot different flow I, to me that may be the thing that we're not talking about enough we're wanting to see this chemistry with Corey Davis, but he doesn't have the the comfort level the security blanket type guys that he's had in the past we also know Mike Vrabel really wanted to see that running game get going in the third preseason game. Just eight carries for 23 yards from Derrick Henry and Deion Lewis. They say they're still figuring out what the roles are back there. What's the ideal makeup of this backfield in your mind? Yeah, Steve, when we talked to Vrabel after the game last night, the sense was they knew going in the Pittsburgh front seven was going to be tough. They were going to blitz. They were going to twist. And the offensive line didn't really react to that. You didn't see a lot of holes. Like even the week before, Deion Lewis gets free on a couple of screen passes. Those alleys, those lanes just simply weren't there. So I think there was some real disappointment about not being able to even establish any semblance of the run to set up anything downfield. And I think the, the takeaway for me from that was we knew this was going to be the case. We knew Pittsburgh was going to do this. And we still didn't have an answer for that. We still didn't respond to that. So I think that's the run game. That's the offensive line. We already talked about Marcus. But as an offense overall, you didn't see anything that really made you feel good going forward because they didn't have the game plan that they knew that they needed. What about defensively? Just one touchdown allowed against a pretty good Steelers starting group led by Ben Roethlisberger. How good can this defense be if, and this is a big if, yeah. they can stay healthy? Well, I think that's the biggest issue with last night was the offensive line, excuse me, the outside linebacker group is just decimated at this point. And you have Harold Landry, the, the second rounder who had really showed a lot of promise, goes down early in the game. It, what does that mean for that group? Suddenly Josh Carraway, who is right on the bubble, is in the mix. And when that happens, when you get that deep in the outside linebacker group, you're not establishing a pass rush. And I think that was what happened as much as anything last night, especially when Roethlisberger was in there. They didn't have answers for just how to get to him, how to pressure him, let alone get him on the ground. So uh, I think it was concerning in some respects that you didn't have the pass rush, but at least in one-on-one, -on -one, the coverage was mostly pretty good. They got beat by Justin Hunter, the former Titan, for a touchdown. But outside of that, I thought they covered pretty well. Speaking of all those injuries, here is the complete list, Travis. And you start with offensive stars like Conklin and Walker, Arakpo, Morgan, Landry got dinged up yesterday, Evans, Butler on defense. 
How big of a concern is this now two weeks out from the regular season opener? Yeah, I'd say without going name by name, you know, about half of them are probably going to be back pretty soon. Uh, Landry, I think that's a key one. Let's see what his ankle, how he responds this week. If he's back out there, I think that would be a big boost to that outside backer group. Uh, I think it's great that you don't see Richard Matthews' name on there for the first time. But my deal with this, Steve, is you're talking about the entire month of August with a new coaching staff trying to establish what they have and, and get some rhythm, get some chemistry. What these injuries have done, you see the variety of positions, is prevent them from seeing what their top 11 look like on either side of the ball, whether that's in a preseason game or a practice. It's just, I feel like it's been disruptive. I think that would be the word that I would use more than anything else, that they haven't been able to evaluate maybe the top line guys as much as they have the depth, which the preseason is more for depth, but at the same time, you'd like to see, you know, what what is your outside linebacker group look like? You don't really know because you haven't really seen 98 and 91 out there in a couple of weeks. John Robinson, Mike Vrabel going to have to sort through all of this now this week when they get down to the final 53-man roster by Saturday. Lots of decisions, and let's take a look here, Travis. The way I have it here is the guys in white at the top are your locks on the offensive side so of the ball. So you've given that freebie to, to J-Rob? That's right. They don't even have to do that. Free one. advice Everybody here else down here fighting for roster spots heading into the final week. Who are the guys that we need to watch for in your mind? Well, there's another injury there with Nick Williams who pulled up on a, a special teams play. His hamstring, we'll have to see uh, kind of what the deal is with him. I thought he was a lock. I would have moved him up to this group based on his special teams play in addition to just being a solid kind of slot guy that uh, they thought maybe Campanero could be, but now he's on IR. I would move him into that group. I think Luke Stocker is in that group. You saw him start last night at the uh, H-back type position in I formation. Uh, Ferkser, I think he made a move last night to say, I can be a uh, kind of a low-key option if you're looking to, to distribute to the tight end. And especially as we wait to see what Delaney Walker's status and how long it takes him to get back up and running, I thought Ferkser really made a move. Uh, the offensive line, I think that's a little tricky because you don't really know how long uh, you're going to need with Conklin. Uh, I'll tell you, another guy who's not on your list is uh, Corey Levin. I think he's yeah, had yeah. a really solid August. Yep. Uh, I would say he's certainly in as a backup. They played him a little bit at guard last night, so I'd be curious to see if they do that in game four on Thursday night. Night. Um, but the group here, I, 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 you kind of get mixed emotions and opinions about the way that some of these guys have performed. I know uh, Pomfield gave up a, a touchdown, or not a touchdown, he gave up a sack pretty early in the game. Um, but overall, I think you're, you're kind of right on. The one guy I didn't mention there is Jennings. I think he's right on the cut line. I think it, it depends on how fast. Matthews is able to knock off the rust, whether he's ready to kind of assert that role right away week one in Miami, uh, whether you see Jennings make the roster. All right, defensively now, you look at this group, it looks like there's basically four guys across the board at every position. Again, these are all the guys fighting for spots either to help defensively or on special teams. Who do you like? Well, I, I guess we'll go sort of left to right. The, the word we get, and I think you probably have heard the same things, is that Wormsley's had a really pleasant, kind of a pleasant surprise for a, a veteran, a guy who's been in a lot of systems, a lot of camps. He, he's been very consistent. Uh, I think Bates is, you can move him into the white uh, as a kind of a special teams ace. He's really earned his stripes How there. How about our guy Spillane? That, that to me is maybe one of the, the under the radar stories of camp. Uh, a rookie tryout. Uh, he was P.J. Flex's first commitment at Western Michigan. I learned that when I talked to him this week. Uh, just someone who continues to show up. I asked Vrabel about him after the game in Pittsburgh, after he strips the ball and, and gets an interception, and apparently called a shot, uh, Vrabel wow. said. His high school teammate who played in Indiana, Semi Cobbs, caught a touchdown for the Redskins. And based on that, Vrabel challenged him to get an interception, and he did. So wow. I don't know if there's a spot, because if I'm really kind of extrapolating the numbers here, the inside backers are a little bit more kind of put together at this point than the outside group that we already talked about. So I think Finch is probably, you can move him up into the white just based on the injury situations there. We know it's going to be a while for uh, Morgan. Not sure about Arakpo. And Caraway is the one that I'm watching most. Uh, this week, I think it's a, a huge opportunity, just like uh, the second half of game three was. Uh, Vrabel singling him out for drawing a hold is something that was a positive for him. 
Uh, this group, too, I, I think Durden made a big move yesterday, had a PBU right on the sideline. Uh, his usage in the game, Steve, if you look at it, was I think right around 55% of the plays mm -hmm. that he was in on. Gafford was only in for about 10% of the plays. So that may tell you a little bit the way they're tipping their hand. But I think a big game coming up Thursday for both of those guys as well for the fifth corner spot. It's a big game for a lot of the guys because assuming the three specialists are all set, all of our locks bring the roster to 40, which means there's 13 spots for the remaining 50 guys heading into Thursday night. Lots on the line. What will you be watching for the most? Well, you know, I think it's someone like uh, Spillane. Uh, you, can they do enough to earn a roster spot? And you feel like what's happened with him, practice over practice, game over game, he's showing them enough to find a way to keep him. Uh, I just don't think there's some of these guys that you, you, they're valuable for what you're trying to do. Uh, I think in some respects we've, we've seen that with Finch. I don't think we had any idea who Sharif Finch was coming into this August, but now we feel pretty confident in what he's able to do in terms of providing that uh, depth and, and pass rush. So I think it's just continuing to figure out who those last few guys are and maybe getting some more people aboard the Spillane train. <laughs> I love it, the Spillane train. We'll see how far it can go. <laughs> Travis Haney, congrats on the new gig again. Thanks Appreciate for the time it. tonight. Yeah. Thanks to Travis Haney from The Athletic for being in last night. Great information there as we start to look at this roster that will come down to 53 men by Friday or Saturday. They have to do it by middle of the afternoon on Saturday. Chances are a lot of it will be done on Friday as we start to put this roster together. Back to the phones we go. Let's say hello to James. James, good evening. Thanks for waiting. You're next up here on Sportsline. See y'all too. I was wondering when will Rashad Evans be back? Well, he came back to practice today, so he is out there with them. Evans sort of said that he doesn't feel like he's really missed all that much or that he's that far behind and feels like he's mentally there and just needs to get on the field and get after it a few times physically and he'll be ready to go. His coach, Mike Vrabel, seemed to say, all right, slow down, rookie. You haven't been out here really at all. You're going to have to practice a few times before we feel comfortable with that. So it will be interesting to see how quickly he can get up to speed but after the false start so to speak last week with his return he was out there today and looked much better all right, good. all right james we appreciate the call thank you very much we need to take a break we will come back with more sports slide right after this here on news channel 5 plus